Hudson Bay in Canada. In winter, polar bears live on the offshore pack ice. But what do they do when temperatures rise and the ice melts? How do the Hudson Bay polar bears spend their summer? Early summer in Hudson Bay. After a long, cold winter, the pack ice slowly starts to break up. For the polar bears, this means the disappearance of their hunting grounds. The polar bear mother is traveling with her cubs. It's time for her to head for the shore. She's had a successful hunting season, and the cubs have grown and developed well. They're strong enough to survive the summer ahead. The mother bear has almost doubled her weight. Her staple diet, seals, are fat and high in calories, but she won't be able to hunt them in summer. The temperatures are rising. This will be a problem in the coming months for these cold-loving animals. Until now, the cubs have only known ice, snow, and water, but that will soon change dramatically. Along the Hudson Bay shore, the tides have broken up the sheet ice, leaving big ice flows. Seals use the remaining frozen surfaces to bask in the sun. but they still have to stay on the lookout because their greatest enemies are only waiting to catch them. In winter, the bears wait in ambush near the seals' breathing holes in the ice. But with the sheet ice now broken up, the only chance the bears have to catch a seal is to sneak up on it. Competition is tough. The big male polar bear and the mother are hoping for a final fat catch. It's risky for the mother. The male could pose a danger to her, but is even more dangerous for her offspring. With no hope of catching seals, a little polar bear cub would be a welcome catch. They both take to their heels as fast as the little one can jump. Like all polar bears, they make their way ashore on the mainland. Now's the right time for it. Within just a few weeks, the pack ice shrinks rapidly and the swim to the coast gets longer and longer. A strenuous journey for the little ones. The strong male has already reached the Hudson Bay coast. It's well fed. Its subcutaneous fat reserves will see it through the summer, but at temperatures around 17 degrees centigrade, polar bears with their thick fur are in danger of overheating. This female bear made it too, and so did her offspring. It was a grueling swim, exhausting, pushing the young bear to its limits. In the water, she could not nurse her offspring, but now the cub can't wait any longer. Fog is moving in from the cold ocean. The cooler temperatures are a welcome relief for the bears. 
Polar bears are experts in saving energy. They have to be, as on the mainland, they must make do with meager rations. They move very little, spending most of the day dozing, preferably somewhere near water or where a light breeze can keep the mosquitoes away. The mother with her cub also enjoys the cool ground, but they stay alert all the time. Polar bear young are never entirely safe with older bears. If the male gets too close, the mother retreats. A rock with a view is the best place to rest. And a safe playground. even if the toys are a bit unwieldy. By late morning, the fog burns off. Staying cool becomes the order of the day. And finding a comfortable position. Temperatures well below zero don't bother polar bears. Warm summer days do, though. They can't perspire or get rid of excess heat in other ways, so they must constantly make sure that they stay cool. Sandbanks are a favorite spot for polar bears. The surrounding sea cools the air and there are no mosquitoes. If it gets too hot, they can go for a swim. But sometimes digging a belly hole in the moist ground works just as well. Like all bears, polar bears are known to be solitary creatures. But there are always exceptions. Adult males are sociable. They form friendships. Many know each other and meet up again every year. Like this male and his pal. Summer bathes the land in sunshine. Things are sprouting, growing and thriving everywhere. The tundra is ablaze with color. Polar bears are not the only animals that spend the summer in Hudson Bay. But they're definitely the laziest. There's a reason for the energy saving. Well-fed animals can fast right up until the ice returns in winter. A beluga whale would still be a delicious treat. In the open waters, however, the agile little whale is out of reach. So near and yet so far. Bitterly disappointing for the bears. Still, Towards the end of the warm season, Hudson Bay offers a sweet treat. 
berries. Lots of berries. The sweet scent has lured a black bear too. It seldom ventures far from the protection of the forest. The tundra is full of danger. There's very little love lost between black bears and polar bears. The polar bear seems to view this chase more as a game. It's not a game that the physically smaller black bear wants to play. With no trees to hide in, he makes his escape. The tundra is polar bear territory. The summer is drawing to a close. In the far north, winter arrives abruptly without warning. It's announced by heavy snowstorms, often in late October. The moose are happy to see the cold return. So are the polar bears. After the stifling summer months with not enough food, this is more like it. The bears can play fight without fear of heat stroke. Their wrestling helps them get into shape for the hunting season ahead. and it reinforces their social ties. Old friends stay together a little longer. Slowly, the Hudson Bay freezes over again. Winter has arrived. For the bears, these are the last days they have to stay on land. The hunting season draws near, out on the frozen ocean. A final bed, a last night on the mainland.
the polar fox is also ready for the cold season. Its white winter coat has already grown. The polar bears are ready to depart. The ice beckons. Finally, their imprisonment on land is over. The kings of the north are free at last. Free to roam across the ice. Free to hunt again. <laughs>